Hey guys, how's it going? In this video, we're gonna look at the diffraction of a wave. So let's get started. Now, the diffraction of a wave is defined as the bending of waves through gaps or around obstacles. So it's just a fancy name for the bending of waves. For example, water waves could bend around a harbour wall or sound waves can bend around a corner. And it's important to know that the amount of diffraction, the amount of bending of a wave, depends on the width of the gap and the wavelength of the wave passing through it. So if we firstly look at how wavelength affects diffraction, so you'll notice that we have these straight waves here which are called wave fronts and we have this gap here between two objects. The first thing to point out first of all is the distance between the two waves here that are produced at the source which is the wavelength. So the distance between two adjacent waves over here is called the wavelength. So notice that as the waves pass through the gap, they're bending ever so slightly at the corners at the edges, and that is diffraction. But it's not a lot of diffraction, it's only a bit of bending. If we were to then increase the wavelength of our waves, i.e. increase the distance between adjacent waves, then it would look like this. Now you might already be thinking that because there's a greater distance between these waves, there's going to be a different amount of bending, a different amount of diffraction when these waves hit the gap, and you would be right. So let's look and see what it does. So you'll see now that as the waves pass through the gap, remember these waves have a bigger wavelength than before, a bigger distance between them. So you'll notice that there's now more bending at the ends. So as they reach the end over here, there's a lot more bending than before. And that is because of a general rule. And the general rule, going back to the notes, is that the greater the wavelength of a wave, the greater the diffraction. So the greater the amount of bending. So the bigger the space between the waves, i.e. the bigger the wavelength, the more diffraction will happen, the more they will bend. So if you have a look at this example in the picture, there's only one object in the wave, so you'll notice that when we have a small wavelength, a small distance between two adjacent waves, then there's not an awful lot of bending as this curves round. But then if we increase the wavelength, increase the space between two adjacent waves, then you'll see that there is more bending happening. The second thing that will affect how much diffraction takes place is how big the gap is. And to visualise this, we can look at this simulation again, and this time we're going to look at how changing the gap size affects it. So the first case is looking at a large gap. So when we've got a large gap, remember this time we're not interested in wavelength, the space between the waves, we're only interested in the gap size and seeing what happens to the bending. So in this case we've got a large gap size, and if I play that, you'll see that the waves are bending through the gap, the large gap, but they're not bending by a massive amount. There's again just a small amount of bending happening at the end, a small amount of diffraction. If I then make the gap size much smaller, much narrower, then you might already be thinking that by changing the gap size, it's going to change how much the waves are going to diffract. And you would again be right in thinking that. So let's see how a small gap this time is going to affect it. So this time you can hopefully see much more bending than before, much more diffraction, and that tells us that smaller gaps produce more diffraction. So smaller gaps produce more diffraction, wider gaps produce less diffraction. And that is another general rule that we're going to have to remember. So going back to the notes now, you'll see the second rule, which is that the larger the gap, the smaller the diffraction. And we just saw that. So the opposite is also true. So the smaller the gap, the larger the diffraction. So this is just a picture of what I've just shown you. So you'll see the waves coming in for the small gap and much more diffraction, much more bending. Whereas for the large gap, you'll see the waves not bending as much. Just one last thing to point out when you're drawing your own diffraction diagrams, you need to always make sure that the spacing is the same between each wave front, between each wave. So you'll notice over here, for example, I've got the same space between each wave. Even when I've shown the bending and shown the waves curving round, there's still the same distance roughly between each wave. And you need to make sure you're doing that in your own diagrams as well. That's all for this video, folks. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it one of these, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.